Hello, everyone in between. Hi. Um, hope you are able to join me tonight for this live needle felted gnome tutorial. If not, don't worry, though, uh, you'll be able to watch the replay. I'm just going to hang about for a few minutes before I get started. And um, hi, hi. Hi, oh, excellent. Oh, it looks like we're gonna have a few tonight. So good to see you all. As you can see, I am fully festive and ready. Um, we are going to be making some beautiful needle felted gnomes tonight. And as you can see, you can go big, or go gnome, sorry. Um, or you can go teeny tiny, and these little ones are just perfect for hanging on the tree and giving us little sort of Christmas stocking um, gifts. But this is so easy to make. It, there's just one, two, three, four components to it, really, really easy. And if you are really anxious about starting a new craft, starting needle felting, then this is just the perfect project for you. So um, I'm Sandy and um, my business is Linkage of Fame Crafts. I design and sell needle felting kits. Um, I have a, an ultimate needle felting blog guide. There's so much stuff on there. I have a YouTube channel. There's loads of video tutorials on there. Um, so, um, you know, you can find anything you want that involves needle felting on those, on those pages and sites. Um, from really, really simple starting basic tutorials to something a little bit more um, challenging. But, but really, it is, it is all about just having a good time, enjoying crafts, um, not trying to be too nervous. You know, you've got nothing to lose by just giving it a go. And that's the most important thing. Crafts are in an incredible respite for everybody for, for so many reasons. Um, and I know during the, the, the past few months, which has been really tough for everyone and even tougher for, for, for many others, that for me, it's, you know, it's been a godsend. So um, I'm just going to have a look. And oh, and it's, these are my pyjamas. Who, who's that? Awkward octopus. No, these, um, these are my pyjamas. I'll have to stand up. Look, I'm, I'm matchy matchy. So... <laughs> Um, so I put my best, I put my best jams on tonight. Um, who have we got? Heaven sent. I can't. Julie Boyle. Julie Boyle. Hi, hi, Sharon. Red Scout. Um, I don't know if my knitting ladies are here. Um, me and the girls get together via Skype on a Wednesday afternoon for knitting um, with our lovely tutor Anna from Blacksmith Shop Crafts. Um, so I'm not sure if any of those have popped along. Bubble and squeak, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Pebble Heath, hi. Anna, Susanna Marsh, Trudy, um, 0013, Lucy May Howard. Hi, Mary. Um, Anna, Anna, Anna Y606, Lucy May Howard, got you there. Oh, excellent. It's lovely to have you all here. Um, and just quickly, you have to bear with me, I'm not the most um, technical of people and this is kind of my first um, proper live tutorial that I've actually planned. Oh hi Anna, Blacksmith Shop Crafts is here, oh thank you. Anna um, at Blacksmith Shop Crafts is, um, is our knitting tutor, but she's, she's brilliant, she just she's um she's great at pretty much anything she sets her hand to and she's um right in the middle of learning how to dye wools and she's been knitting these um with with the other girls she's been knitting it's like um couple bubble toil and trouble in their kitchen on a wednesday afternoon um because they're doing plant dyeing linda i'm very new trying to get you on my computer not ipad hi linda wilkinson um Oh, Mary's got me on the telly. Mary's my girl. She's she's a darling. Um, okay, right. So um, all you need with you is um, a felting needle, some wool tops or wool batting, whichever ones you've got. So these are going to be I'm going to be using this for the for the hats tonight. Some core wool, which is just what you're going to use for the body. Now that can either be wool tops. Or roving, you might know it's roving, or it can be carded wool. That's fine. Anything goes with this project. 
it's really really simple as far as needles are concerned when we make the hat it speeds up the process if you've got more than one needle but you don't need more than one what I often do is can you see that I turn elastic band about around two or three needles um, you don't need any fancy equipment at all but if you have got the fancy equipment or you've got the holders then that's a three four needle holder I've just got a couple in there um, this one is bringing on the big guns so quite a few needles now this is really useful when we do the hat because it's flat felting and it, it just speeds up the process but it's not necessary and I'll kind of talk in between so you can get on if you are felting you can get on with it while I'm talking just a simple single needle holder or just one needle is absolutely fine so that's all you need um, you need something to rest on so I've got a rice mat here but it can be anything that's just sort of soft um, foam mat there as well um, really good for, for most needle felting and if you have got one of my kits because I know some of you on here might have one of my kits and I know there's people on here who've come on who are a bit frightened and a bit nervous to start and and this is what it's all about it's about it's about giving you confidence you know you have got nothing to lose by by just having a go you have everything to lose by not but nothing to lose by having a go and it's it doesn't you know don't one thing I say don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter three, four or five or even chapter two. You know, you've got to start somewhere. And looking at all these amazing needle felted projects online is wonderful. But you, you won't start there. You know, so, so we're going to keep it simple and just get you going and teach you the basics. Now, if you've got the needle felting kit, you can use that to felt along. There is also um, a video on YouTube. There's a tutorial on there. So in there, you'll have uh, wool tops your needles and all the all the bits that you need to complete this project um let's have a look sarah grindley hi pink corsage hi faye nicole witten hi nicole ah uh, anna you anna's got a beer what have you all got i i've just had a cup of coffee and some ginger parking um that i made i made it because it's supposed to last um weeks when you've made it ha <laughs> very funny it's almost gone um at crafts hi romagatina is did i say that right hell from indiana from indiana hi there from indiana pj needle felting party trudy 0013 felt creation by vicky hi vicky bridget lawrence hi lisa murphy Oh, in the fairy garden. Hello, I was in the wrong place. LOL. I'm Deborah. Lovely to see you. Kiss. Lovely to see you too, Deborah. Marcia Levy. Rebecca. Chu. Sorry, I just I just wanted to say hello to as many people as I could before we started. Okay. Dodge the rainbow. Okay. Terry. Hi, Terry. Hi, Terry Powell. My lovely friend Terry. Great to great to have you here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the phone down and um, I've got the phone on the laptop as well. So hopefully I'll be able to see the, the comments as I'm felting. But if you know, apologies if I, if I don't, I tend to sort of get a bit engrossed. So here we go. Let's um, go down. So is that nice and clear? I think you can all see that. My hands. Yeah, that's good. Right, okay. Um, I'll just move this out of the way. This is... Um, uh, a snowman I might do this before Christmas this is really easy but there is also a video tutorial on YouTube for that and just while I remember uh, this is um, there's also a video tutorial for winter pumpkins so you don't have to put them away after the autumn's finished um, you can keep these out all Christmas so there is a there's a tutorial on IGTV for this one and it's also on my YouTube channel so you can uh, learn how to make those uh, Walter pumpkin in about 20 minutes really easy okay here we go then so I think I'm going to keep it quite simple and then add some embellishments um, so as you can see I've got three different styles here and if you're making teeny tiny ones the, the process is exactly the same 
just the same um, techniques, just a lot smaller and they're, they're really fast to make. So let's get going. So the first thing we do is we make the hat because what we want to do is we make the hat and then we make the body to actually fit the hat. So that's how I like to work. Um, it usually works that way. I think I, I did it back to front at a, a workshop once and <laughs> we spent ages trying to get the body to fit. Terry will probably remember that. I think Terry was there. Um, so if you've got wool tops or you've got a kit, then this is what you'll be using. If you've got wool batting, which is just carded sheets, it's kind of semi lightly felted. So it goes in the wool tops all brushed in one direction, the carded lengths much shorter and brushed in lots of different directions. Um, I'll try and do a bit of both so that I can show you both techniques really simple. You don't need a template, but if you did want to use a template for the hat, um, you just need a triangle, something that is taller than it is wide. This is about 12 by 10 centimeters. I'll probably do a hat a bit bigger than that. Uh, but I know it looks really tiny, but you will, you will see um, what I mean as we go on. So if you're using your wool tops, just pull off pieces of wool top. Don't have your hands close together. You see how strong that is. But if you just pull it apart like that gently, it just pulls away. And what you want to do, I've just turned this round, I think, and go this way, is spread it out a little bit, lay it on top of your mat. There we go. And then that should do it. But if you wanted it a bit thicker and you wanted to really make sure you're not going to have any gaps, you can actually lay some lengths across. We don't want it too thick, but we don't want any gaps either. So that's how you're going to prepare your wool for um, your wool tops, if that's what you're using. If you're using a batting sheet, then you just lay that down and we'll, we'll work on that in a moment. So. I'll pop the template on just to show you what I mean. So just make sure that there's no gappy areas. Now I've got a three needle uh, uh, needle sort of stabber here, but I'm, and I'm only using this just because it speeds it up. Otherwise, we'd be here all night. Um, you know, I want to obviously I've only got an hour. Um, so all you do is you lightly felt around. You draw a line with. I'm doing it slightly bigger than the template, so depending on how much wool you have, it's up to you. You just draw a line around that template. Just go over that a few times. There we go. Take the template off. You might, yes, you can see it. So you can see you've got this, this really sort of loose triangular shape going on here. Now all you're going to do is just pull those sides over. I'll do it this way. Pull those sides over just so it, it starts to tug on where you've actually drawn that line and, and then just felt it down. Do the same on the other side. Try and do it like that. So just pull it over. And use your use your needle. I'll go to a single one as well. So use your needle just to, to pull that over. Leave the bottom bit for now. Don't worry about the top, we want that loose wool, that will all be sort of twizzled in later. Just very gently felt it, and, and when you push through, you're, you're just pushing through the top of whatever surface you're felting on. You don't need to go all the way to the bottom because all you're doing is pushing the wool into the mat that you're felting on and it just makes it more difficult to peel it off. There we go. Then this here is going to be the bottom of the hat and we leave this till last because we want this edge to be really neat. Can you see how that's starting to shape now? Can you see that? So I'm just going to pull that over, make sure these edges are in line, nice and neat. And just pull it in with your needle or your hands. Keep your fingers out of the way. It does hurt when you stab yourself but it won't last. Okay, so can you see I've got, and, and this shape needs to be rough, rough. It, you know, don't, don't be getting out the ruler and measuring it. 
it doesn't matter that's the, the great thing about needle felting is you can pretty much adapt anything um, and your hands are just brilliant tools so you use those a lot as well so what's happening is all the fibers are getting tangled we've got barbs on these needles and they're pulling the wool in and out and, and wool itself has got like little scales that, that sort of hook into each other they want to felt whether it be um, through heat and water or through dry needle felting so you're tangling all those fibers together to hold them and then just peel it gently off your mat and this is why you don't want to go too far into the mat peel it off gently just grab hold of it turn it over and can you see how already you've almost got your hat there now in carry on felting with that so carry on with that i have got this now i love these these are called punch needle tools they've got seven needles in they've got a guard on as well so it means that they're really good um for for kids for younger kids um it's much harder for them to to stab themselves with this i always say 10 years and over for felting but always supervise them but you know you could have a 16 year old you wouldn't trust with a needle and and a six year old that you would so you know it's it's it it all depends on on uh, the the child so this though it's got seven needles and what this does is it just really speeds up the process so if you're making a lot of them like you know i tend to make a lot i usually start making gnomes in august um it just really speeds up the process all these things i think most of these things you can get the three needle one here they're all in the shop but you can get them um in all sorts of places online but what that does is it just speeds up the process just go along that point as well okay there we go turn it over and then carry on so if you carry on doing that if you are using the wool batting it's exactly the same you lay on your template or not you just I mean I've done them that often now that I'm I just sort of do it without but just go up around again and see just see where I've done that and if you've got too much just th this is um the joy of the batting is it, it's very short so you can um just pull the fibers off really easily um don't do the bottom first do the sides first so bring it in and can you see it's exactly the same as you did with your your wool tops exactly the same procedure nothing changes it just is thicker and felt quicker now for hats and, and flat felting, wool batting's great, but when I um, make um, my animals, just bear with me, if I'm making something like a winter hair, then I, this is um, white Jacob, so I tend to, the core just tends to be the same wool um, and it just firms up really well and I like that control I have on it. So I, I, I use both wools. Um, pull the, just got a bit much there still. Pull the end over and just felt that in. And over again. And then continue to felt that like with the wool top. Again, I'm just using this one just for speed. See how that's getting really nice and felted already. And you can keep going with this for as long as you like, make it as firm as you like. But at this point, if you want to add any embellishments to it, you can add... I've got some curls here um they're really nice curls who are these from these are from newmore barn um they're they're 
sell so many locks um, that they're really um, they're a great shop. Um, I've got oh what have I got here? I've got some silks as well. This is sort of oh, lots of different coloured silks. So I might put a little bit of that in. And then I've also got here. This is brilliant stuff. This I use this for the winter pumpkins. This is it's called Throaster's Silk Waste. And it it's just it's sort of waste silk and then but if you spread it out what happens is you get that like cobwebby effect it's just it's brilliant so I think I'll pop a bit of that on you don't need much of this it's kind of just a, a, an accent really so pop that on there and then just just gently felt these these bits in you don't want them over felted you kind of want them to sit a little bit proud um, on your on your hat and then oh, do I throw everything at it let's have a look I've got some just sort of goldy brown locks here just pop that on you can do this afterwards as well but it's um it's often easier to add some of it whilst you're doing it okay and then we can turn that over i'm just going to quickly felt from this side don't worry if you get behind like I said this is going to be on a replay so you can go back and finish it off um i would love to see any photographs from tonight's tutorial and then i can pop them in my um gallery which would be brilliant okay so just wrap over any edges all right so i think what we'll do is i'll just um what we're going to do now is create this nice cone shape so all you do is you fold your hat in half and what you will have is this seam here so all you do is felt along the seam you see and that closes that seam up again all that wool because it's still it doesn't want to be over felt all that wool will felt together now if you felted it quite firm and you're finding that the seams really visible all you, you need to do is just pop a little bit of loose wool along that seam and then that fresh wool will, will gather everything together. So I'm going along this seam and you can see how that's creating that hat shape. So I'm going to do mine quite quickly. You can carry on with yours while I'm sort of talking, but I'm just aware that we do only have an hour and I, I do have a tendency to over talk. There we go. So you can see already we now have a gnome hat. And then what you can do with the ends, just grab it between your fingers and just twizzle it round or roll it in your hands and again the heat and the friction felts that together and can you see how lovely those details start to look now and we can add a few more so that is um that's ready let me have a look then let's see where we are um I'll just let you carry on felt and I'm just having a quick look at messages. Show us your mince pies, Aussie Joy. I've had ginger parking. I didn't have mince pies. The idea was it was supposed to last, but it's it's all been eaten. A day in the life, yeah. Okay, hi everyone. Hi, hi everyone who's joined. Oh, hi Sean. <laughs> Oh, missing you too, Terry. Um, Terry's one of the gorgeous girls um, who's been to a lot of my workshops. And obviously, you know, we've not had workshops for the last 
Yeah, Linda Wilkinson, OMG, stabbed myself. <laughs> Ouchie, it's gone blue. <laughs> um, was that Throaster's Waste Silk? Yes, Throaster's, S-T-E-R-S, Throaster's Silk Waste. Um, West Coast of Canada. Oh, yeah, there's one on YouTube. Um, Bold Jane, yeah. Okay, need more wine. Right, lovely. So there's no um, no no real questions there. So you all seem to be doing okay. So you should have, or I'll be on your way. Just let me know if you're making these. If you're almost there with your hat and ready to start the body. Um, this is what we're going to be doing next. So we're going to be making the body to actually go with with the hat. No. Nope. Awesome, I'll write it down to Google later. Okay, all right then, so we're gonna get on to the body. Now for the body, um, you can use wool, uh, carded wool, but I'm gonna use wool tops because I, I, I just used to using them. I, I've used them for, oh, gosh, I mean, oh, Lincolnshire Fan Crafts will be seven in February. Can you believe that? Anna, Terry, can you believe that? Seven. Um, so I'm gonna use wool top. Now this is a Jacob wool top and, and try and use a coarse, a medium coarse wool top. Um, it, merino is has is wonderful for all sorts of things but for needle felting when you want it firm and you want to felt it quickly it takes an age and what will happen is you'll end up with loads of needle marks you'll find it quite difficult to felt and if you've just started felting you'll think you've done something wrong if you're doing if you've just started needle felting you actually haven't it's it's the wool you're using and it does make a difference so I am going to use a nice um, white Jacob wool top um, and you will see how easy this is to felt. Yeah. Yes, I'll show you how to do the ruche style hat. Yeah, um, that's really easy. We'll do that when we we add all the, the little details in. Yeah, okay. Right, so I'm gonna pop you back down again. Here we go. Right, so. Length of wool top or carded wool, it doesn't matter. Um, and what you were going to do is we're going to roll um, a body that is going to fit your hat and make it smaller than you think it needs to be and you can always add some more wool. You can always add with um, needle felting but it's more difficult to take it away once you've felted it. So start at the end, tuck in those ends and what I want you to do is really push it in firmly, turn it so it's really firm. Can you see? how firm that looks. You're not gonna use your needle yet, and then pull in those sides. Now, your body can be any size, it doesn't matter. It can be tall, short, it really doesn't matter. I just sort of tend to go with whatever I end up with. I've got a bit of red wool in here. I should have turned the mat over. Um, so keep going. So you look, you see how firm that is. You want it really tight. Now, if it's loose like that, undo it, pull it back, and start again. So you're pulling that in, you're pushing it down. If you've got your foam mat, you're doing exactly the same on your foam. No difference at all. And then when it's about, I don't know, half the size or two thirds of the size you think it needs to be, take your needle, single one, you only need a single needle, and then just watch your fingers. Start to tangle all that wool together so it holds and don't bend the needle this is a 38 standard triangular needle I'm using 36 is good as well they're just good all-rounders and you can use this for pretty much anything from making the body to felting the ears to adding the eyes and the nose on whatever it is you're making and don't worry about this being a perfect shape because it's going to be covered up so keep it going Keep those fingers out of the way like you would a knife keep felting it round and then where's my hat bit big yet so just check so I'm going to roll all of this up You see how little felting I've actually done at the moment. You don't need to, it's really just about getting it nice and firm because um, if you don't do that, you're going to spend, 
oh, such a long time actually felting the, the thing, which, you know, life's just, life's just a little bit short, really. I'm not a perfectionist. Um, I'm not really bothered how you get there as long, you know, as long as you're happy with the end result, not bothered how you do it. This is just my way of doing things. Um, what works for me, everyone will be slightly different. If you want to know about all the different wools, um, I've just done a really great blog on the Lincoln Fen Crafts um, needle felting blog guide. Um, and there is also a little chart that I've put in there. It took me ages to do. So it's, it's a really comprehensive guide to what wools work best um, for needle felting. Core wool, which everyone gets confused about. Basically, core wool is what you use for the middle of your project. doesn't matter. That, that's it's as easy as it is. It's, it's, it's really simple. So what we want to do is, as we're, we're doing this, so we're, we're making like a little barrel. And decide which end is your bottom and just go straight in with your needle and flatten it. And you see that? Now, it's not a perfect shape by um, any stretch, and it doesn't need to be, but just along the top there, just go in at a, di a diagonal angle because we're gonna, this bit's going to be narrow because we're going to pop the head on that. So I'm just kind of really, you can go firmer, but as you can see, that's sort of firm, but it, it comes back to its shape. What you don't want is, you don't want something that is like that and then just, it has got no structure. It's, it's like the scaffolding. You need the scaffolding to, to, to make sure that the building stays upright. So there we go. It's that easy. So you've got body. Check your hat. Just turn it in. Now your hat can come as far down as you want it can you know it may sit up on the top it doesn't matter whatever size it is pop that hat on make sure that these seams are felted if you've just got a little bit of a gap then just go along the inside like that just felt it in and can you see um, when we were doing the hat, how um, I said not to turn over the, the base until last. And that's because it gives you that nice soft finish so there's no, there's no raggy ends. So pop your hat on. Like so. And then just, what you want to do is, just around the, the brim of the hat, push your needle through until you connect with the body. And what will happen is you will tangle the fibres of the hat into the body so that it will actually hold. So you don't sew anything. Nothing needs sewing with felting. That's another joy. And just go around and it only needs to be loosely attached. It's not a toy, so this shouldn't be handled. It's not for kids to play with. It's, it's an ornament or a gift. Um, so there's, there's no need for that to be over. Because if you over felt it you'll end up with lots of needle marks and you don't want to distort um, and spoil what you've you've just created. If there are needle, work, needle marks, sorry, just go around and just rub your finger over it and that will just take them out. Oh, just, I love working with wool. It's just the best thing ever. I started knitting this year, uh, you know, I've been wanting, it's been on my list for, for a long time. You know, I've, I've, I've made really long scarves for a very long time and nothing else. I am now on my, so I made myself a cardigan, made my daughter a cardigan for her 21st and I'm now knitting myself a boat neck jumper. Um, I am using the patterns and wool from Lauren Aston Designs. She's brilliant, really simple. I mean, if I can knit, anyone can knit. Anna will testify to that. Um, so there we go. So there's your, your hat. So I'm just going to move that and see, are we... So because we flatten the bottom, you don't actually need to um, have anything on that base. So if it's wobbling, and, 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 and you can come back later and do this, don't worry too much about it now, but if it's wobbling, then just go along with your needle, um, or if you've got 
two needles together like I use with elastic band. And just felt that base and then that will sit there. Right, so there we are. So now we have the body and we have a hat. So again, you will have all sorts of wool probably going on. I've got these here. Just keep it simple, really simple. That's like a really nice, long, thin hat. Keep it really simple or as embellished as you like. We'll add a few more bits when we're done. This one here um, has got um, purple locks in. It's got the silk throaster's waist and um it's yeah purple locks there as well so and this is it's um it's a, like a two-tone wool um we'll probably use that on this one actually so it's a wool um a gray wool that's got white silk um shot through it which works really nicely so we'll probably do that so do i go into my green or my red i think i'll go i'll swap over to green now one that i did earlier and then if you've got any loose bits you can just felt them in and if you want to add any more bits around the edges you can do that doesn't work oh that might look quite nice we'll see I'll come back to that so here we go right we're going so now we're going to put the beard on so where are we at hi everyone she's moved a long way from the little scarf oh hi Subaki um, I don't know if you can see in the background, I have to show you because she's here. Subaki makes the most amazing felted flowers. I have so many of her things. Look at these gorgeous little Christmas trees that I've um, I've got from her. She's so clever. Um, and I know that she's made gnomes because I've seen them in her pictures um, and they're fabulous. So here we are. So I've swapped colours. There we go. This is my green one. So we've got, what we want now is we want to add a beard. Now you can either add a full sort of skirt or just have it at the front. Let's see what we're doing for time. And I am going to... Oh, no, before we do that, stop. We need to do the nose. Nose, I nearly forgot. Uh, where's my nose? Just grab my... Well, so here we have, so this is called eggshell, so it's just like a, a sort of light skin tony, fleshy colour. If you have a cocktail stick, you can use this, but you don't need to. So we'll just quickly whip down again. Sorry about that, Nelly, Nelly left him no, noseless, which was, which is really bad. Um, if you haven't got a cocktail stick, then you're just going to um, roll it into a seed check, but I'll show you how. So I'll show, show you both methods. I like a big nose. So on your cocktail stick, this is wool top. You can use carded wool as well and just wrap it round. Really tight. And then just around that wooden stick, just felt. And then wrap it round some more. You want this really tight. And then just rub it around. Wool will stick to itself as well, as you can see. And then just felt gently. You really just so this wool holds. And keep those um, ends a little bit loose because we're going to use those to attach it to the, to the uh, body. So once you've done that, you've got it on your stick, you take it off. Just pull it off your stick. If you're not using the stick, then just take whatever colour wool you're using, it doesn't matter what colour it is, just pop it in your hands, just roll it so it mats together, and then roll it backwards and forwards till you've kind of got a really sort of big, seed shape and this does exactly the same thing but you may just want to 
actually felt it a little bit before you um, attach it. But I'll show you how to do that as well. So we'll go back to the one that I did with the cocktail stick. Decide which is going to, so you want the seam at the back. So we're going to the front here. And what I'm going to do is, this is going to be the nose. And you want to stick the nose right under the hat. And those loose bits, use those just to push in. And felt those edges. Watch your fingers when you're doing this. And just use that needle if there's any loose bits just to just to pull it around don't bend the needle um if you're using a 38 they're, they're quite sturdy the higher the number the finer the needle so if you're doing lots of sort of fine surface details on a, on a particular project then you might want to go with say a 40. but can you see you've got that nose on there and that's already made a huge difference so you need that on before the beard. I was I was jumping ahead a little bit there. Okay. So you've got the nose on. If you are, if you've done the other seed shape which you've just created, then this is this is a bit loose. You would firm it up a bit more. But again, you just do exactly the same, and you can tuck that in. Like I said, mine's a bit loose, so work on it a little bit. You can also do it um, in, a, in a sort of ball shape. It doesn't have to be that seed shape. And then just tuck it in there. There we go. And you've got another nose there. But we'll go to this one. So the wool that I'm going to use is this, um, I'm not sure what this is. I think this is a Coriadale, um, white and grey Coriadale. So just pull off a little piece. Now you do need, I, I think you need wool tops for beards. You can, you, the batting's absolutely fine. Um, you can go with curls. Curls look amazing. Um, you can use those, but it, um, you're not, you, know, you don't often have curls in your wool stash box and um, they can be quite expensive if you're using a lot. So take a, a, just a, a nice thin sort of strip of, of wool top Fold it over and then pop it under the nose and just secure the folded edge under the nose. Bring it up round the sides And that is how simple it is. Already you have a beard. Wow, this nose is really big, isn't it? I like it though, I like it. Now, if you want, you can go for sort of like a full skirt. Or you can just have it at the front. Depends how much wool you've got, really, and, and what effect you want to have. Now, you can either leave it so it's nice and loose. You can actually sit it on a shelf so that actually hangs over. Or you can actually trim it in line with the base of your... of the body. There we go. If you can see that. Right, so I'll just flip it back up again. So how are we all doing? Um, okay. Right, so this is where I'm at. And hopefully you're somewhere close. But don't worry, again, you can just go back and do the, um, do the replay. So how easy was that? The easiest thing um, to do now what I've got here is I've got, I've got some really nice um, embellishments I've got some white silk here which I'm actually going to pop a bit into the beard so I'll just pop that back down again let me see yeah I've lost you on my, um, my laptop so there we go so just tuck that in under there and bring it down and it's a nice contrast and just use your needle just to to thin it out and 
and that looks really nice and then I'm just going to grab some curls where's my green ones and I'm just going to add maybe just some no maybe not I'll just pop that there I think what I'm going to do is just have a curl over hanging so you see you can add these you can add these in later and I'm just going to trim that off and then what I can do is I can go around that side and add a little curl in there and then just in there so you see that that's just that's looking great and then what I've got here um oh where did I get these from I've got these sort of pearly type beads um they are plastic but they're they're not like single use so I have no problem with with that when it's um for embellishments things that you're going to keep um for me I'm, I'm absolutely fine with that um I know this isn't going to end up in the sea or in the bin um so these where they get these from little crafty bugs a great craft company and they are really inexpensive you can get so many craft embellishments from there you can um yeah there's loads so just go on to little crafty bugs and just have a look uh just put in string of beads or something like that and you will see these so i'm just going to slot that under there what you can actually do is with these you can secure them in place with a, a little stitch but i haven't really got time to do that so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to wrap that round and then I suppose what you could do as well is I'll just grab a little bit of wool I don't think I've got the same colour but what you could do is you could actually just lay a little bit of wool over one of the thin string pieces and then that will actually secure the beads Watch your fingers. So just over the top of one of the strings, and you see that's just held the beads in place, so you don't actually even need to, to stitch that. And that really is is it. Um, I've got a few things I want to check with you, see how you're doing. I feel I'm going to have to get some curls. They really add so much. They do, Awkward Octopus. Um, New More Barn, it has a, a massive range of curls, but if you go on Etsy, there's a lot of really good independent sellers. Um, if you're looking for, I mean, I sell all the wools in the shop, but if you're looking to buy bulk, then somewhere like World of Wool, Wig and Wool, um, Wig and Wool Works, they, you know, they, they, they have a really nice range. Um, I'm dotting between hat and body because I had holes in the hat. That's why if you've got holes in the hat, just grab some wool and just lay it on the offending area and just felt it on. Um, I'm assuming that you're probably using wool top. So if you do that, yeah, you can just, that's why um, sometimes it's quite useful to actually lay um, before you create the shape of the hat is to have lengths of wool top and then um, going across as well and that's and it covers up um, any any sort of areas that are missing um, now you wanted to know how to scrunch up the hat so I'm just gonna walk that down there again hopefully you can see so um, you can see this hat here it's quite got this sort of little cute um, bends in it um, sort of crooked a crooked sort of hat look and I really like that um, so all you need to do is just get your hat fold it up watch your fingers when you do this wool everywhere here yep just fold it up sort of concertina style and then just push your needle through watch your finger when you do this this is where you're likely to stab yourself and immediately can you see how that's created that little crooked hat look and it's it's just such a really nice effect so with this one you can see it's just one color it's really simple but it's actually one of my favorites I just love the simplicity of that and it's so easy to make um, and then if you want to sort of as I said go all out you've got this one here this has got some gorgeous uh, purple uh, locks the throaster's waist 
again just uh, the body can be if you're doing a full skirt then don't worry I mean you can the body can be pink it doesn't matter use whatever you've got don't be sort of too precious over it that's that's the thing um, you can make really simple sort of pastel -y ones which are, are really nice I love pastels um, and I'm just looking to see what I've got or oh, here I've just put a little bit of extra wool on there and I've given them this sort of handlebar pull that off handlebar moustache which just adds a bit of detail and character it's got a bit wispy now just trim that just twizzle those ends so you can see how how nice that is so it really is a case of just using anything you have what have we got up here oh I'm show you this one I'm gonna show you this one so this is um, from Highland Colours. She's on Etsy and she has a website and she plant dyes all of her wool. Um, I actually use um, her wool in some of my needle felting kits, my, uh, my some of my newest sheep felting kits, like this one. This is Rosa and it's, it's all plant dyed wool. She forages the plants, um, she spins the wool herself and she hand dyes it. It's a really long and, and, and quite a technical process and she's been doing it a long time so she knows what she's doing. But, um, you know, so and, and they're quite expensive but, but, but they are worth every penny. And what I've done on this one is I've put all these plant dyed locks um, around um, like a skirt. I say they're quite expensive in, in comparison to your normal standard locks. But these are plant dyed. They are hand spun. This is this is this is art yarn, um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So if you pop over to Highland Colours, then that's where you will find all these. She has got the most amazing range of wool. So spend hours there. So again, that's quite simple. You've gone for those curls. I've added some silk in here, and then this one is um, like a begonia. So it's a warm red, and again, you've got that white silk shot through. Full skirt. Um, I've got a right mess on this table. Dear me. Look at it. So, um, come back up. So you can... Yeah, the curly locks are gorgeous. Um, Murphy 3. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I just wanted to tell you a few things. Um, I'm going to be doing this again on Facebook Live. Probably next end of next week. Probably Saturday night, something like that. I think I was going to do it. Um, same time. Um, notifications if you want notifications then make sure you switch them on on Facebook and Instagram so then you'll know when I'm going live or I'll send out a story or something just to to let you know I'll preempt um, what's to come what's to come well do you want do you want a snowman tutorial that's what I need to know um, I knitted that Anna's heard me talk about this so many times I've told everyone how I knitted that I knitted that um, but you don't have to knit the hat there is um you can you can felt a hat that's really easy so we'll we'll, we'll do that um, but these are even easier than the gnome so you know they're just and they're just absolutely gorgeous it's getting those face details right that is what I would spend time on so I would show you how to sort of get those fine details um, done and um, there is actually a tutorial on the blog for this a full snowman tutorial a written one so you can go on there there are video tutorials for the gnome um, and then what you'll also find on YouTube and on my blog is there I've done a series of video tutorials rather than make a whole hair or a whole sheep I've broken it down into the body parts so you can adapt it for anything that you're making whether you have a kit or you don't have a kit doesn't matter it works both ways so if you've got a kit, you've got a hair kit, you can go along and it's the basic body shapes um, split into several video tutorials. So how to make the body, how to make the legs firm, how to make the head, how to make the big ears, sheep's ears, robin wings, how to create um, wings without needing a template or, or um, a cookie cutter. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, any more questions? If you... You can message me um, if you want a kit there on the website. I'm just going to show you. This is my newest kit. This is Percy Penguin. Where is he? 
and you actually use a reverse needle for this and that you get the reverse needle in the kit um me and the uh me and the knitting ladies are going to be making him very soon um so he's in a kit which is that one and you get everything in there you need i even put the stick in for his fishing rod which is actually from a display I have at home, which is getting really small. So you get all your, your lovely wools in there and a little, a little scarf. So you can pop along to the website and um, purchase kits from there. If you buy more than one kit, make sure you use, there's a two special offer on, so make sure you use that. Um, so Snowman, really thank you so much. Yeah, the ruched look for the hat is gorgeous. Ruched, that's it, that's a much better word. How do we crinkle up the hat like you have on the shelf, please? I think I've, I've just done that, Shelley, if you haven't seen it. So if you just um, rewind that when you go onto the replay. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm just about out of time. I've got five minutes. I've done really well, actually. I'm surprised I haven't been cut off. Um, in the fairy garden. Yeah. Thank you. It's been such a wonderful tutorial. Oh, thank you so much. It's been really nice. I was really nervous. Um, but I'm really looking forward to all that. I've really enjoyed it, but I'm really looking forward to all the rest now. I feel I feel okay about it. Yes, please to the snowman. Lovely face. Is that the snowman or me? I'm assuming it's the snowman. <laughs> Primo Primero. <laughs> uh, thanks, everyone. Okay, well, I'm going to go. Um, not sure how to turn it off. I think I'll just end it. And um, I'll see you, if you come over to Facebook, um, probably a week on Saturday. Um, I'll put some posts up. Make sure you sign up for notifications. If you're going over to YouTube, I put tutorials on there quite a lot. Make sure you subscribe and then you'll get all the notifications for them. But there's a ton of stuff on there. It's all free. Just get creating. Um, grab your wool, grab your needles or just watch it. Just, you know, for a little bit of respite, you will not regret it. And, you know, and hopefully this has built your confidence up. And you can go out there and just think, yeah, I'm just going to do it now. Just going to do it. And you can always message me. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye.